Hi, I'm Bay Kupin and you're watching Rappler. Last week, Amanda Lago of the Rappler Lifestyle section hosted a roundtable with editors, reporters, and producers from the sports, hustle, and voices sections to talk about some of the podcasts under Rappler. So today, we're going to talk about the rest of Rappler's podcast lineup, and we're joined today by reporters who cover the news and produce investigative stories Oftentimes, simultaneously. Today, it's my goal to pick their brains kasi minsan ko lang nagagawa ito. Um, not just about the podcast they produce, but also about their work as journalists, particularly during a pandemic. So, I'm joined by Lian Buwan. She covers the judiciary and hosts Law of the Terror Land. Judas Gavilan mainly covers human rights and hosts Newsbreak Beyond the Stories. Pia Ranada covers Malacanang for Rappler and host Seat of Power, and Ram Botalabong. He covers local governments and the police and is the host of Criminal. So, hi guys! Kamusta? Hey, Bea. Hi, Bea. Di ba? Parang di tayo magkakilala. nag interview ako. <laughs> oh, interview ko kayo as if you don't know each other. Okay. Parang hindi tayo magka-chat kanina, Bea. <laughs> oh, di ba? Parang hindi lang tayo nag-uusap ano-ano. Okay. I have a very simple question to start off this Rappler talk. Um, <laughs> kinakabahan na ba kayo? Uh, okay. So, yeah, I'm just curious kasi what I want is for people to also see kung bakit nyo ginagawa yung trabaho nyo. So, um, why are you journalists or maybe paano kayo napunta sa profession na ito in the first place? Maybe we can start with Lian? Alphabetical na lang. Sabihin ko sana start with the youngest para hindi ako... <laughs> para, hindi para may time to think. <laughs> Uh, um, to answer your question, um, mahirap and simple. Um, I'm I'm one of those people who knew from the start what she wanted to do. I I have that blessing or a curse. So bata pa lang ako. I really wanted to be a journalist nagad. I didn't know which kind. I didn't want, I didn't know if it's for television or newspaper or online. But I wanted to be a journalist mainly because I just wanted to tell a story. Tell, to, I just want to tell stories. So. All my life, all my actions have been towards being a journalist. So, ganun ka boring yung story. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Wala nang paligoy-ligoy. Wala nang paligoy. Straight for. It was a straight line to journalism, I'm afraid. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's... <laughs> Siguro, my journalism career began kasi it's really yan. Gusto rin niyang magsulat at magtell ng story. Ako kasi, I'm a reader. Ever since bata ako, nagbabasa na ako ng tabloid, like Bulgar, like at yes. eight years old, gusto na ako ng Bulgar, tik-tik, ganun. So, for, <laughs> for a distinct yung, childhood. Yeah. yeah, shout out to Abante. Yes, ganun, sa Abante rin. So, yung mga, mga solo, yung mga ganun, part ng vocabulary ko, bata siya. So, uh, moving forward, like, hindi ko naman in-imagine na I will be a journalist. Mahiligan talaga ako magbasa ng mga news. Then, I took journalism as, dapat prilo siya. Pero, uh, I took the, Internship na Rappler 2013, and then I realized, dahil to kay Miss Miriam Grace Go, ang news editor na Rappler, sabi niya, ang excitement daw ay nasa field. So, okay, hindi na ako nag-lo, hindi na ako nag-person ng... ng, ng so, ako, naniwala ka naman, oh, kay Miss Gigi. Oh, yan, eventually, like, I went to the field 2014, then the 30 administration, dun ko parang yung love for, and affirmation being journalist, ay patuloy siya. Thank you. Pia, you came from the lifestyle section. Yes, I covered beauty pageants and food. And now I covered Duterte. Wow. What, what a wonderful 180. Yeah. So, yeah. Why are you a journalist? Parang mix of what Jody and Leanne said. So, parang like the two of them yung love for writing yung, yung simula. So, I remember actually nung when I was mga eight or seven, I even wrote my own parang graphic novel about my life with my sister. So parang at that age, parang I already felt a need to like document my life, ganon, and things around me. So parang nag-start doon. Pero syempre nung college, nung high school, parang when you're thinking of practical things to do, to make money, parang syempre yung mga sinasabi ng mga tao, be a lawyer, that's where you you can make a good living, ganyan. Pero na-turn off ako sa, sa lawyering kasi I didn't want to have to take an exam again and go to school again. So Parang biglang nabalik ako dun sa first love ko, which is writing about things I see and things that I experience. So, so yun, parang, parang journalism became a way to practice my love for writing and stories. But at the same time, hindi ako tied down to like an office job or, you know, like a nine to five where I'm always experiencing something new every day and meeting new people every day. So, kaya ako nag-stay also because 
may ganung may ganung parang excitement in in the life of a journalist no matter how hard and stressful it can be oh, last but not the least the bunso of this rapper <laughs> <laughs> hate the bunso makne char okay why why am a journalist um mas grande sa mga siguro sa akin yung experience din jo des um Journalism for me, unlike the Testament, is not my first love. As in, my first love was really involving myself with political political communities, political dialogues. Ang first course to sa atin actually was Paul Sai before I shifted to communications when I wanted to be involved in journalism. And hindi ko nakita yung sarili ko na magsusulat talaga. Mahilig lang talaga yung makapag-usap sa mga tao. And as in, gusto kong hindi ako na fofo mo and hindi ako nawawala sa usapan. As in, Machika lang talaga ako. When I know that there's a problem, I want to get involved in it and how can I solve that? And um, dahil kami yung aking degree, naisip ko na, why don't I go into journalism? And when I went into journalism, natuwa ako. Ang saya kasi nakikipag-usap, nakikipag-usap ako sa mga tao. And sa pagkipag-usap pala sa mga tao, pwede ka magdala ng pagbabago. And um, dire-diretsyo na rin siya. Yung konteksto rin siguro ang, ang nag, nagdala sa akin dito. Kasi dun sa college experience ko, ang daming nangyari sa political sphere. Duterte was elected, Marcos Burial. Madaming political awakening sa aming batch na and I feel like I'm one of those na na naitapon doon and it was just natural for me to gravitate towards journalism and now I'm here with you guys. Rambo, thanks for reminding us na nung 2016 nasa college ka pa lang. <laughs> Grabe. Ano ba yung, yung, yung awakening niya as a student may Duterte after na so tayo naka, nakadanas pa tayo ng ibang presidente. Okay, so like I think what we have, like what most of us have in common is really, you know, the desire to tell stories, um, which is a perfect seg to podcasting. Um, it's a relatively new thing in, in not, well, in journalism, not so much, but in the Philippines and in journalism, it's, it's not that, um, so it's not something that people have super explored yet. Um, so before we jump into, you know, the, the, the technical processes of producing the podcast that you host, um, siguro quick round lang din, like, what's the idea behind the podcast that you have now? Same order ba tayo, Bea? Pwede naman. Or pwede din tayo magsapawan. Okay lang. <laughs> this is a space for chaos. Go, Lian. Go, Lian. Okay. Go We know that you want to. <laughs> <laughs> so, I host uh, Law of the Tertaland podcast. It's the it's Rappler's legal podcast. Kaya nga yung suot ko ngayon, very stenographer realness. Charot. <laughs> so, so um, Law, uh, al- alam mo, I don't know. I, sh- I I feel like I should ask the viewers to comment kung nagets ba nila yung play on the word of law of the Terta land. Kasi some people did not get it agad-agad. Kasi parang nakakabulol siya. Nila. Hindi ko alam eh, pero I had to explain that it's a play on the phrase, it's the law of the land. So, insert the Terta there and it becomes law of the Terta land. And when I was coming up ah. with it, parang sabi ko, bakit <laughs> Nag- may realization si Pia? Ah, okay. <laughs> Nung una, parang I, I, I didn't want to confine the show to just the Terte. Kasi paano kung um, tw- after 2022 and the podcast is still here, would I have to rebrand? Pero parang kasi it's the thrust of the show eh. What has the Duterte administration done to the legal world? Ang dami kong sinabi. Yun lang, Bea. <laughs> okay, after that, Beautifully short and concise um, answer. Uh, Jodes, you're, you're, oh, sorry. So, Beyond the News Break, Beyond the Story is one of the first news podcasts of Rappler. Actually, one of the first podcasts of Rappler na hanggang ngayon nag-survive pa rin. Because God knows, marami ng podcast yeah, na ibigaw ng Rappler. <laughs> and, hindi na siya Trailblazer, Survivor. Survivor. So, like, um, yeah, but like, this was before, like, in, in effect, like, I feel like Beyond the Stories was birthed before parang mas naging easy mag-buy into the idea of the podcasts for news in the Philippines. So like, walk us through the history. Like, paano siya nag-start in the first place? Actually, yung history niyan, I remember the first episode was with Lian, di ba? With the Huda Huda Fluffer talaga. It was about the withdrawal of the, uh, from the International Criminal Court. Oh yeah, that's right. Diba, it's parang yung concept na yun. So, parang ang dami ng nitigriti, ang dami ng mga nuances, sides sa dapat mo, na mahirap na i-encounter it sa isang article lang. So, parang doon ko na kuya idea na maybe it's time we do a podcast na free-flowing yung discussions na lahat ng mga sides, lahat ng mga, like kunyari, for example, the, the side of the government, the side of the human rights, yung good and bad, yung mga gray area, pasok siya lahat doon. So, that's the 
how the news media stories, yun yung rational behind it. And parang pinaka-simple na reason ko is, pagod na ako magbasa napakaraming article, like for a journalist, na hindi ko alam kung sino saan ako pupunta. So parang itong podcast ito, this is a way feeling for me to process yung information na nakukuha ko. Like, of course, as a journalist, we're, we are required to read then kahit beyond our beats. So, mm-hmm. kunyari, may business issue, merong sa Congress, or minsan sa, pre- sa presidential issues din na minsan hindi ko nasusundan. I see the news media and the stories as a parang weekend way for people to digest everything that happened in the week. Which, like, if sa sobrang fast-paced na news cycle, mahirap mangyari dyan if you're going to rely only on your social media feeds. Jude, sabihin mo yung untold story beyond beyond the stories. Nasa table tayo sa office, tas nilapitan yeah. tayo ni Ma'am Chai Hofilenya at sinabing, kung i-podcast nyo na lang kaya ito. Oh. <laughs> Ding! That's how it was born. Pinaganda pa ni Judes, eh, no? Okay, um, Pia. Seat of Power is about two things. So, it's about the president and the presidency. Because those are two different things. So, Rodrigo Duterte as the man, the person, the leader, and the office of the president as an institution. So, in my pag-cover ko ng Malacanang, parang I see that the person affects the office and the office also changes the person. So, you can't really separate the two. And, you know, the two of them are always interchanging, interlacing, and influencing each other. So, parang what I wanted to do was to tell Duterte's political story, but also in relation to Malacanang, which is an institution that will outlast him, diba? It's been there since Commonwealth period and even before that. And then, uh, even after, after mawala ni Duterte, may, may well, hopefully, may presidente pa rin tayo, diba? That office will stay and will continue to to greatly impact the nation. So, yun, parang, I see, I see it more of um, exploring those two things. And in my podcast, nag-invite ako ng mga guests, like experts, political analysts, and sometimes even Filipinos na na-affect ng policies ni Duterte. So, like a COVID-19 war doctor or um, people who are uh, labeled as terrorists and then now may anti-terror law. So, parang all of these things, ang laki kasi ng, ng sakop ng Office of the President, it affects all aspects of her life. And parang people don't really understand that, that Malacanang can touch them in ways that they don't know. So, parang the goal of the podcast is to inform them na, hey, may ganito nangyayari sa taas and watch out kasi baka one day you'll find yourself affected by it. Rambo? Um, my podcast, my baby podcast is Criminal and actually the, the title really gives it away already. Criminal um, and the, like Pia's um, recounting of her podcast, it really involves two tensions. There's a tension between the crime scene and the society where it happens. And uh, the podcast really explores how these stories don't happen in a vacuum, how crime is committed by an entire village. We allow it to happen. It's not something that just happens out of nothing. We talk about the crime scene, but we also go beyond the crime scene. We trace back the history, the context. For example, if some, an activist is killed, he, he was not really killed in a, in a political environment. We have a context of a highly vitriolic environment against activists in this administration. So that's one aspect of it. And uh, for the telling of the stories, we speak with the people who were who knew the people who are the victims. We actually spoke with a victim of martial law um, two weeks ago. And um, for episodes without people who have first-hand knowledge, we try to go to the research and make a narrative podcast out of it. Okay, I'm curious, Plow. Like when you when you started the podcast of, I mean, obviously, aside from the technical process of you know actually recording, parang was it like something na parang it was a wild idea randomly while you were writing a story or breaking a story or writing one of your um, in-depth pieces or was it something na parang through the years, right? Because some of you have covered your beat, well, all of you have covered your beats for several years already. Like, was it something na parang there must be a, a different way of reporting or telling the story that I want to tell? Yung podcast ko, actually by accident siya. Kasi, <laughs> actually, I've had a long experience or a long interest in podcasting. Mm-hmm. And before, I would do podcasts. Pero parang one-off lang. Like, for yeah. yung Duterte year, parang half year Duterte mark, gumawa ako ng three podcasts. This for like yung Duterte's attack on media, parang may separate podcast. So parang for for this, the last, yung Duterte year, year three na ba? Year four? 
Year 4. Sana siya gumawa ng... Wala na concept of time. <laughs> oh, my, oh my God. Time is nothing. <laughs> so parang, I wanted to do a podcast na parang one-off lang like before. Pero sinabi na ko ni Miss Beth, who's our production head, na... Ay, Pia, may bagong rule. Hindi na pala pwede yung one-off. So, make your own <laughs> series na lang. So, parang... Okay, and so... A series. So, okay, okay. I have to cook up something. Ganyan, ganyan. So, yan. Pitch. Su- sulat ng email. Shoot email to to bosses. And yan. Approve naman yung yung idea ko. Tapos, the graphics team really did a good job whipping up mga graphics in a really short span of time. Tapos, yan. Nag-conceptualize ako ng certain episodes. And then, yan na. Launch na. Kasi, I really wanted my... Duterte Year 4 podcast to to come out in time for Duterte Year 4. So, yun, after nun, tuloy-tuloy lang. Parang, wala namang, hindi naman nawawala ng topics for under, for Malacanang. For better or worse, no? Yeah. Hindi, hindi nawawala ng topic. Okay, anyone else? In the legal beat, I always find myself having to talk about the law. Whether I would want to talk about it or dahil may hindi nakagets or may nagpapa-explain. Parang ganun. So, parang all my stories involve ako da on the side. Yung tipong, ah, ganito kasi yan. Kasi ganito, blah, 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 blah. So, so, parang, parang okay, eh, ina-explain ko lang din naman siya. Eh, bakit hindi ko na lang siya i-explain in a podcast? Pero, um, I, I tried to do that during a summer session on Bank sa Baguio. Ta- pero sobrang amateurish nung, nung pagkaka-produce and Ano lang siya, very, uh, ano lang, parang randomly thought out sa so ganyan. So, po, hindi siya nag-fly. Tapos, one, one day, or one, oh, tama, one day, uh, I was in vacation in Bali. Ta- wow, na na So, siya, made in Bali pala. Na, so, pre-pandemic, pre-pandemic. Pre-pandemic. <laughs> yes, pre-pandemic. Ginaklaro lang natin. <laughs> yes, pre-pandemic Bali. Wala akong magawa. Nakikinig ako sa podcast ni Rambo about the President's Affinity for List. Tapos ko, wow, ang ganda. Ganda ng style ni Rambo, the storytelling. Tapos parang, na-feel ko yung ganda ng storytelling. Pero na-feel ko din na, it's quite of a, ma- ma- maayos lang siyang i-produce. Kasi kukuha ka lang ng mga sound bites from the past. Ganon. And syempre, mag evolve na yan into something more. Pero yung ganong klaseng, oh, okay, hugot lang ako ng podcast. Sabi ko, ingit ako kay Rambo. Gusto ko siyang gayahin. <laughs> so, so habang nagbabakasyon ako sa Bali, iniisip ko na kung ano yung pwede kong gawin yun. And sabi ko, you know, I have been talking about warrantless arrests for days on end, weeks on end. It's like, I, I have found myself having to explain it to so many other people. Let's just do it. Ganon. Tapos, yun nga, uh, pinasa ko yung script as a one-off episode, which I called, boldly called, The War on the Law. Ako na yung nag-declare. <laughs> Tapos sinabi ni Ma'am Chai and ni Ma'am Beth na gawin mo na lang show. And thus, The Law of the Terta Land was born. Was born. Sabi niya, you mean I get to talk regularly? <laughs> Are you ready? So, <laughs> I just have to turn my mic on. <laughs> That's <laughs> it. <laughs> Okay, so that's a rambo. As sa akin naman, uh, I've had experience now with podcasts before this uh, Newsbreak Beyond the Stories. I used to uh, be part of the production team for Ma Martes Vitogs. Kasi before niya magkaroon ng Rappler Talk, Mar- Ma Martes was exploring podcasts. This was during the 2016 campaign. So, you know, ang mga guests niya ay usually yung mga campaign teams ng bawat candidate. Ako yung, ako, yung nag, ako, yung, ako yung audio guy first, basically. Kasi pinupuntahan namin yung mga tao sa mga campaign headquarters nila. So, ako yung nagmamando nung recording. And then, nakikita ko yung mga how Ma'am ma- Martes asked her questions. And then, realize ko na, may mga, may mga interviews nga talaga na parang mas better na gagawin mo sa audio compared na i-present ko via video. Kasi pansin ko how comfortable yung mga tao na inakausap niya kahit dahil walang camera. So, mas free-flowing yung discussion as opposed to naka-video, naka-formal uh, setup. And then, also, kasi ginagawa ko naman yung mga fast facts, explainer types, na basically parang mas con- mas limited version ng news break beyond the stories on the issues ng uh, facing the Philippines. So, and then, ICC happened. Then, that afternoon with Lian Buwan sa Rappler office nangyari na nakor- na na ako minimum China gawin na lang podcast and then ayun naging news break beyond the stories na siya na eventually naging twice a week and then naging dahil ang dami nangyayari sa Pilipinas naging once a week na siya once a week yes with the beta oh Rambo for me naman um actually 
feeling ko parang ang baba as compared sa aking mga colleagues na ang gagaling talaga. For me, it, it's really how fun it is to produce a podcast. Kasi I think I came into it as in yung Kinaton Lee and kanina yung story on like the 30 and list. And then, um, I, I remember earlier na may pinash din akong ano, eh, insert episode sa Beyond the Stories to Death, right? Yung parang sa Nazareno ata or is it about yung story of the Filipino. Basta meron akong mga pinapasok na mga podcast sa ibang ongoing series. It was a period of experimentation for me on how to tell stories excitedly kasi parang nauumay na ako magsulat na 1,500 words and then embed picture, embed picture, embed video and then quote and then think about it. Since mga sakit na ulo ko at that point. And, and uh, I was really so into podcast as in tuwang-tuwa ako kasi mga pardon pardon for mentioning kasi mga western podcast tuwang-tuwa ako na makinig ng ganda ng production nila and and uh, maybe we can do something like this for for the Philippines as well. Like, and Jodas is already doing it and other podcasting um, groups are already doing it. And it, it might be fun to tell stories with this medium. And uh, um, the enjoy ko naman siyang gawin. And I guess for criminal, it's a, it's a commitment na to actually have something that I take care on my own and be accountable on my own. Kaya, ayun na, may criminal na. So, walang i-share na basically, I mean, I'm sure not everyone who's watching this knows this, but like, Um, we don't, we're not experts, obviously, in everything that happens in the Philippines. And more often than not, what happens is we ask the group chats, like, of Rappler reporters, of, of Rappler friends, or whatever, di ba? Or, or sometimes I PM even reporters to just ask, ano ba to? Hindi ko nagigets yung nangyayari sa Senate or sa House. So, in effect, yung nangyayari dito is, you're just expanding. <laughs> Para nga kay Lian, ako yung kuda niya naman in real life with friends or like people from Rappler. You're basically recording it now packaging it in a better way for um, Rappler listeners and viewers to enjoy. Enjoy. Enjoy yan, no? Ang bibigat ng topic ng isang, pero enjoy daw. So, okay. Enjoy na. So, <laughs> so, most of your podcasts, except for, tata ba, most of the podcasts under news now were born during the lockdown, right? Mine was except born for, during the lockdown. Except <laughs> for, for news break. Um, parang seat of power, hindi. Kasi year, the 30 year 4 pa, meron na. Lockdown yun, Pia. Lockdown na yun, Pia. Lockdown na yun, Pia. Lockdown na yun, Pia. What is time? Ano? Hindi, naglapas tayo ng March. What is time, even? Okay, so, I mean, obviously, two-prong question to. Parang, first of all, di ba, parang the, the lockdown affected the way we work in Rappler. Like, obviously, hindi na tayo nakakalabas ng basta-basta. You guys aren't able to go to your beats anymore. How does that play into producing a podcast especially during quarantine, there are so many issues that need to be talked about, reported on. And, but you have the factor na you, we're all forced to work from home. I think the biggest problem that na represents sa akin ng lockdown is the technical side. Right. Because of course, we don't have the equipment that we have in the office. And uh, ako kasi, hindi ako driven kasi yung podcast ko ng Rapplers I, I talk to, like the interviews over Zoom. I mean, the internet doesn't cooperate with right. uh, And sometimes then, yung uh, environment mo na parang podcast should be tar- recording yung podcast, lalo na pag mga uh, interview types. Dapat talaga sa office siya na tahimik. Pero dahil nga nasa bahay ako, I have to make do with what I have. Kaya lahat ng podcast recording ko, if mapansin mo, is at 9pm, gabi na, kasi doon yung mabilis yung internet tahimik na yung mga tao, and wala nang parang mga uh, notification na mag-pop-up sa mga channels namin. And parang, pero aside from that, siguro one thing din na napansin ko na hindi siya, I don't want to call it like a uh, upside, pero it's easier to to pin the reporters down sa Wednesday 9pm <laughs> kasi dati kasi before the lockdown, I will have to find kung kailan sila nasa office. Pero ngayon sila sa bahay tayong lahat. I can just like schedule Wednesday 9pm. Okay ba kayo dito? So usually... So wala na silang excuse. <laughs> so wala na silang magawa. And then, mas much better kasi mas nabilis yung production. Um, sa akin naman, uh, I... Parang... I was kind of glad. Late, belated din na realize ko. I was kind of glad na na-push yung launch ng Law of the Tertaland into the pandemic. Kasi nung nilaunch namin yung two-part episode, which is War on the Law Part 1 and War on the Law Part 2, nag-pandemic na. Tapos actually, I was worried na, okay, what's gonna be my episode 3? Ang gagawin ko dito? What did I get myself into? And then one night, one late night, the president ranted against, you know, the left and sinabi niya, um, 
uh, ba- pag lumabas kayo sa quarantine, shoot them dead. I remember that talaga. Tapos parang ako, es, parang bakit biglang may shoot them dead? And dun ko, lang na, dun ko na lang naisip agad na, oh my God, we're in for a ride in this pandemic. Tapos, yun na, kinuha ko na yung, yung idea na may shoot them dead soundbite si President Duterte. And I just have had a Rappler talk with Attorney Chel Jok, no And the week before that, meron akong Rappler talk with Attorney Ted De about justice. So parang, say ko, oh, uh, all of these topics are coming together. So parang, I found a way to become economical with my resources and my time so that each episode doesn't entail like one entire story process. Yung hindi hindi siya parang nagpo-produce ka ng special report because hindi talaga kaya na ng time. So parang I I found na okay, make do with the sound with the sound bites that is publicly available and the sound bites that you already have from interviews from the past week and then package that into an audio which I hope that our listeners get to enjoy and appreciate. Naalala ko lang pala na yung one of the first Rappler podcast series pala was Campaign Convos. Campaign Convos, yeah. <laughs> So, oh, right. 2019, it was me and the other political reporters na nagko-cover oh, yeah. ng So, naalala ko na yun kasi yung isang major difference with making a podcast lock, pre-lockdown versus during lockdown is uh, nung pre-lockdown, mala- marami kang freedom and resources to get natural sound which is a really mm. good asset to have when making a podcast. Kasi I remember we would record things like yung campaign rally jingles, Or yung mga, even just sounds of parang mga ambush interviews and mga scrum and yung mga kaguluhan and chaos during a rally. It really adds color and texture to a podcast. Whereas ngayon, since hindi naman pwede mag-cover physically, you're, you're reduced to parang mga, nat, mga, mga sound bites from press conferences or from mga interviews mo through Zoom. So parang nakukulangan yung, parang hindi na siya ganun ka deep and detailed for me and not as rich. So, yun lang. Parang, I'm grateful though na buti na lang may Zoom technology, na may mga live streaming technology, so we can still get sound bites from people, even sometimes natural sound kung may event na, na parang naka-live stream. But, yun pa rin. Nakamiss pa rin yung, you're running after natural sound, you're running after, you're looking at your environment and thinking, hmm, what can I take from this rally or this event? What can I repurpose for a podcast? Parang ngayon, hindi na ganun karaming instruments mo and the ingredients that you have to make a really nice, parang riveting, compelling podcast. Kasi kumbaga, it, it's easier to bring the person to the place that you're talking about through in that sort na. Yeah, um, mas it, immersive siya eh. Kasi right. may mga little sounds that make a big difference. Diba? Buti na lang walang ganong element sa Love Duterte land. Batas-batas lang po tayo dito. Wala po tayo ng little sound. Which leads me to, 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 to Rambos. Kasi parang, diba, parang oh. criminal walks you through, like, I don't want to say true crime, walks you through mm-hmm. these cases of, of criminals. Quote the them. crime scene. Mm-hmm. Right. So, obviously, hindi, una sa lahat, hindi mo na, hindi ka naman nakakalabas at nakakakula sa crime scene ngayon. And also, yeah. like, uh, some of them are, 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 like, incidents that happened in the past. So, how do you figure that into criminal? So, yung sa uh, criminal naman, I think, ano rin kasi, Let me just go back before the pandemic. I produced din akong story on yung Duterte's list. So, mm-hmm. hindi ko naman kinailangan na maraming back, background sound as in yung going to the scene itself. Marami ng ano, sot mismo. As in, meron na rin sa background music. Kalimbawa, yung speech ng Duterte. Kinig mo yung ingay ng mga sundalo kasi kinakausap yung mga sundalo when he was talking about the list. So, it's also being about economic kasi wala, wala rin talagang magagawa nga hindi talagang makakapunta sa crime. And as much as possible, ang ginagawa ko nilang speaking with the, the victims and the families. Kasi yun know, sa closest thing that we have. And hanggang sa ano nila talaga sa bosses nila, which um, hopefully nakakonvey nila yung emotions nila as raw as possible. And when it comes to gathering information naman, nabanggat din nila yun, marami na rin informasyon na nasa public space talaga, which is easily accessible, na pagsasama-samahin mo na lang and you're going to package it. Okay, so ito... Hindi naman loaded question siguro na. Pero okay, so people might not, well, I, people might be aware or they might not be aware. But on top of the beats that you cover, that you regularly cover, you're also part of clusters. That's how we work in Rappler. We also have clusters. Um, sometimes that means writing stories not necessarily, that are posted not necessarily in the news section. It can show up in whichever section. 
And on top of that, you also write stories for news break, in-depth investigative pieces, or diba? And then you have podcasting duty. So how do you, like, I think you mentioned it na rin briefly kanina, yung being economical about the the resources that you have, like repurposing interviews perhaps into a podcast. So, but how do you keep sane? Balance your tasks. <laughs> um, like all these Hello. tasks. Uh, yeah. <laughs> For me, naging part na siya ng routine ko talaga. Kasi, I think, uh, more than a year na yun ang podcast eh. 2019, March ako nag-upisa. So, siguro... Oh, she a veteran. She is. <laughs> one year and six months. She's the wise one. <laughs> she is. Parang yung mga process ko, like from, from choosing a topic, writing the questions, writing the, the story page. Then recording, transcribing, getting the excerpts, and what lahat na yun, parang hindi ko siya ginagawa in one blow. So parang, kunyari, I will a lot, take 30 minutes every day for the podcast task. So I usually record Wednesday 9pm, the para Thursday. So Monday, meron na akong topic na scan ko na with the reporter, then I will write the questions then, send the questions to the reporter. Ganun, ganun ako parang sinisingin ko siya sa mga times na may lull or idle moments ko from the everyday routine. Kasi if, kunyari, for example, gagawin ko lang siya on Wednesday before I record, parang siya lang gahol na. Pagod na ako when I record by Wednesday 9pm. So parang, hindi siya madaling gawin kasi weekly nga yung episodes ko. Parang, pero eventually, yes, nagiging muscle memory na lang siya as months pass by. Especially, ngayon na nasa pandemic tayo. Ah, uh, medyo nakakabaliw siya, pero can I say it? It's, ano naman eh, pag narinig mo na yung final episode, and then, when you hear people say na, uy, ang ganda ng topic mo this week, may mga nag-message sa akin sa Twitter, sa Facebook, pati wow. sa email. Parang, okay, thank you for She's the- a popular. <laughs> She's a popular. <laughs> She's a popular. She has fans. Nakikinig po na sa mga efforts ko. So, parang, okay. Uh, it's worth it. And then, the another cycle starts. Hingang malalim mo ulit. <laughs> <laughs> to, your, to, your, uh, to your question on how do you keep sane when you have a podcast on top of all your tasks, it's actually the podcast that has kept me sane. Kasi, of course, it's the podcast that keeps me sane, Miss Lincoln Because with or without podcast, I will always find either a willing victim or a coerced victim to, fa- to talk about the law with. So, with or without podcast, may kukudaan akong isang tao or a group of people tungkol sa mga bagay na to. So, with the podcast, I mean, who you mean to say I get to do my kudaan portion for an audience? How wonderful! Thank you so much for this opportunity. <laughs> Ganun yung dating niya sa akin. So, so I, I like the podcast because it gives, it forces me to a lot of time in the week to sit down and just process. And, and, and Alam mo yun, parang I take pleasure in processing all these things, tapos sa hanap ka ng mga sound bites. And then yun nga, sabi ni Jodes, when you finally listen to the edited version na parang, uy, meron akong nagawang may kwenta, or oh, kind of, this kind of makes sense, ganun. Siyempre, nagkakaroon ng mga week na, my God, anong topic ko? <laughs> hindi ko na alam. Pero you know, in this political climate, hindi ka mawawalan talaga ng topic on legal issues. But uh, it's been fun trying, uh, it's been fun engaging the followers on Twitter. Kasi minsan pag wala na akong maisip, I crowdsource. So actually, my past episodes have been pitches and suggestions by people on Twitter. So thank you so much for for those suggestions. Nagpa shout out si Miss Lee and sa mga listeners. Kung pwede ko lang kayong itagline sa podcast, itatagline ko kayo. So thanks so much for your suggestions. Sa akin, um, I, kasi kakasimula ka pa lang two months ago and I was pretty stressed when I started this podcast. And niligyan ko siya ng cap talaga na just twice a month. Let's just do it twice a month. I can't do it weekly. Kasi nakikita ako si Judas at si Leah na oh my God, hindi nila ginagawa. Ang dami nilang ginagawa. Next na ako para sa kanila. And, and I don't know, hindi, hindi, hindi kaya nang schedule ko. I feel like. So, sinubo ko twice a week. And kahit nga twice a week, nahihirapan din ako eh. So, I'm still trying to juggle it. Juggle, juggle you know, writing a podcast and then trying to um, meet the requirements of being a reporter in the in the kind also strive for exclusive strive to break the story and then live tweet and everything um same as judas it's also a moment to you know just pause and look at it in the bigger bigger picture that okay wh- what does the what does this crime mean what does this what does this story mean in the bigger scheme of things in the beat that i am covering and mas nakakakalma rin siya kung talagang naghahanda ka na maayos unlike judas hindi pa siya muscle memory for me i still 
trying to force myself into getting into this rhythm of producing a podcast, doing an in-depth explainer, breaking a story, what um press briefings. But I think uh, no, we we're going we're going there. I hope, especially with the mentorship of the Destin Lee and then Pia. Ah, <laughs> mentorship. Oh, Sarah. <laughs> Pia. Um, sa akin naman, parang yung maganda sa podcast is pwede talaga siyang i-repurpose for other other deliverables as a reporter. So, parang when I make, when I look for a, uh, someone to interview and I look for a topic, parang I'm also thinking that this podcast interview, I can also quote for my in-depth and then parang um, pwede, when I listen to a press con, for example, ni Harry Roque, parang in my mind, naghanap na ako ng magandang soundbite na pwedeng i-feature sa sa podcast. Kasi hindi naman lahat ng soundbite from Harry or other officials um, are news in themselves, di ba? Like, mm. you, you can't really make breaking story from every single single thing he says. Pero may mga little details, little side notes siya or side remarks na at first glance, it doesn't sound important. But if you, you've been covering him a long time, you've been covering the beat for a long time and the issue for a long time, alam mo na may significance yun. And mag, parang it's, it's the best way to weave those details together and make sense of it all is through a podcast when you can string it um, with different sound bites across time and parang may time na nag-emerge and may story na nag-emerge that you would not have had if you just diba, covered it piecemeal, diba? breaking, break, break there, break the next day. So, medyo nagiging muscle na rin siya in a way kasi ano eh, parang you have to be always on guard for something like that. But, ano, parang medyo nahihirapan pa ako minsan to balance my time kasi mabigat yung beat and then parang medyo trabaho din to look for a guest and if they're available. Okay. And to be honest, like when you cover Malacanang, not a lot of people, malam maraming political experts, but not a lot of people are experts on Duterte. Kasi medyo okay. boggling siya talaga to, to analyze. Like he's so unpredictable and even the most seasoned political experts have a hard time really making sense of it. So, there are actually times when I write the podcast na ako yung nag-analyze lang. Kasi, yeah. parang iba yung, when you, when you watch the beat for a long time, you still, you can still bank on your version, your own form of expertise that isn't from, di ba, from theoretical or academic studies, but more of because you've been watching this official okay. for a long time and you kind of know from his, uh, her, his past acts kung paano siya mag-behave. So, right. Can I just uh, add uh, also na meron of may... Of course, Miss <laughs> there, there are details you can tell in a podcast which you can, which otherwise can't write in a story. Like, I was listening to Pia's um, podcast kanina tas I like her opening so much. Yung, yeah. yung speakership rose yeah. na sinabi niya na it's Tuesday, September right. 29 and the reporters cannot sleep. Because right. I I remember watching the group chat at hindi talaga sila natulog. Diba? Beto mo ko lang yun eh. I have to say it <laughs> Kasi nag-meeting na sa intro. Yeah. nag ako nung gabing yun, tapos hindi pa rin sila natutulog. Sabi ko, good for you, Pia, for saying this. Also, yun, no, but, but, add, add ko rin sa akin. Na, yun nga, may mga, hindi, di, may mga details na hindi masama sa article. For example, meron ako question palagi pag buwan ay dumay podcast sa reporters. So, parang, from your opinion, bakit ganito? From your opinion, where does this place si ganito ganyan? So, parang I'm drawing na from... Uh, yung observation ng reporters na minsan hindi nila pwedeng ilagay sa article, sa mga straight articles, basically, unless they do like a full in-depth on it. So, parang, usually, yung mga magagandang quotes na ina-excerpt ko at kumukuha ng magandang engagement, lalo na pag galit, parang hindi naman galit, pero medyo, uh, na-feel mo yung intensity, kung saan bumuhugot yung reporter after months of, of, of covering the certain issue, parang humihinga sila dun sa podcast ko. Right. Yeah. No, I was gonna say nga na parang um like kasi hindi niyo sabihin to kasi ayun yung ayun yung siguro magbuhat ng sariling bangko but like I feel like when I listen to your podcast like it shows that the it, the years that you've spent um not just in your beats but in the news like it shows um in the kinds of insights that you that you write or the kinds of insights that you say um in the podcast and again um, mga yung 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 kasi like hindi mo naman pwedeng isulat sa beat, 'di ba? Manila Philippines. Hindi nakatulog yung mga reporter ng Malacañang at ng House. Pwede, try natin. Try natin. <laughs> Push the boundaries. Mag-break kayo ng story isang araw. Tingnan natin ko anong reaction ng desk. Pero 'di ba parang those are insights that you that you don't really that it's, it's that's harder to share on a formal platform. Um at least in the way that we're used to. 
uh, mm. in news, which leads me to, to my next question. I mean, like multi, like the idea of multimedia, literally day one ng Rappler, when we signed our contracts, it's right there. You know, we're expected to be multimedia reporters, multimedia producers, journalists. Um, but again, like I said kanina, podcasts aren't that saturated yet in the, or, well, Malami nang sumusulpot na podcast, but like in the in those in the world of news, especially in the Philippines, like it's it hasn't been such a exploited medium just yet. So how different or the same is is working on a podcast compared to let's say you guys writing your your long form stories or or preparing a video report, be it a spot news report or like uh, a more in depth piece uh, translated into video. I think for me, yung the difference is I get to ask all the questions I want and I'm sure it can be delivered in one complete package. As opposed to, for example, I do an interview for a story. Minsan hindi siya papasok sa isang story lang. And parang, uh, parang dito pumapasok din yung sinasabi na there are, there are no, well, there are no stupid questions or whatever. Like minsan may magkatanong sa, may mag-message sa akin ng maganda na, Listeners sabihin na, ang ganda ng question mo dito, ah. buti tinanong mo. Pero sa isip ko, sabi ko, hindi ko talaga alam yung sagot dyan, kaya tinanong mo. Eh. <laughs> so, parang ito yung maganda, like, walang pretensions dito, like, na, na alam mo yung sinasulit, alam mo yung sinasabi mo, kaya ka nagtatanong. Talagang, it comes from a place of legit uh, interest of not knowing what's happening, not knowing how everything is put into context. As opposed to when you write the article, parang, okay, magsulat ako na about sa human rights. Parang medyo, I can do this. Kailangan authority ka na. Oo. Oh, as opposed to like doing this podcast, just break down the story specifically. Na I'm, go- I'm coming from a place na, kunyari, wala akong alam. Like, lalo na pag, pag topic ay business, pag topic ay health, education, na wala akong alam masyado. So, ayun, parang, yun yung time difference na kita ko. Like, as uh, between what I do on a normal day, like writing new- numerous stories, as opposed to like, compared to, me doing my podcast. Like, I get to ask questions na hindi ko talaga alam yung sagot. <laughs> na baka isipin ng mga tao, ang talino naman ito, pero talaga hindi ko talaga alam yung sagot doon. <laughs> Para sa akin naman, yung podcast, very personal siyang medium. Kasi, it's your voice talking to yeah. another person and they're all alone in their car or in their room or wherever. And parang you're whispering to them, you're sharing your knowledge to them. So, parang may mas flexibility ka to be yourself and to give your thoughts about a topic na parang kumbaga may, ano na, may sense of branding na in a way na ownership na ito yung podcast ni Pia, ito yung podcast ni Rambo and, or ni Lian and everything. And it's also a podcast branded to the beat. So, mm. parang for me, mas, it's a very exciting medium that you can insert a little bit of yourself in it but also be talking about something bigger, a shared experience that your your listener will also will also relate to because they're in the same reality. They're under the same official. They have to deal with the same policies. So, para an intimate conversation with a friend. And for me, and daming pwede pang gawin with podcasts na hindi pa explored, lalo na sa Pilipinas. Especially with, the Filipinos are, makwento tayo eh. We like to, to be with our friends, chat about, our life and what's going on. So, may malaking audience out there. And for me, ang dami pong pwedeng gawin to experiment with the podcast medium, especially for political podcasting. Kasi this, this could be our way to bring politics closer to our generation and even to the younger generation. Kasi nga, more, it's, it's really the young who listen to podcasts, diba? And yung, parang we, we tend, they tend to shy away from long-form articles, medyo intimidating yung investigative, pero pag podcast, parang deep dive lang siya, na they just sit back, relax, listen to you, explain something to them. So parang, bakit yun way for us to convince them to be more political and to get more involved in things that will affect their lives, but siguro they're just not yet that informed about it. Ako naman, what I like about podcast is it, you can be less structured with it. As, uh, as opposed to what you are required to be when you're writing a special report or an in-depth. Kasi pag pinagsulat ka ng storya, you've got to have a thesis statement. Kailangan meron kang makukuhang, this is my analysis and this is my thesis statement. Um, I'm not saying that wala kang thesis statement sa podcast kasi podcast still requires the same 
authority of content, the same credibility of analysis and whatever. Pero alam mo yun, kunyo, for example, in a, in a legal story, tatanungin ako ni Ma'am Chai. Si Ma'am Chai talaga, no, lagi nababanggit. Tatanungin ako ni Ma'am Chai or tatanungin ako ng kaibigan na, Lian, anong ibig sabihin na itong batas na to? Lian, will this petition work? Eh, hindi ko po alam. Like, alam mo yun, yung parang, Lian, anong nangyayari? Hindi ko rin po alam. Ganun. So, imbis na pahirapan ko yung sarili kong sagutin siya in, a, in, a, in, a, in an article or in a special report, I'll just make a podcast where we can all just, you know, go through the mess of it together. So, uh, the idea is, you know, those coffee, coffee shop conversations or inuman conversations or even just casual conversations among lawyers or lawyers explaining it to their non-lawyer friends na alam mo kasi ganito yan and they can be as candid as can be. I hope to take that experience and share it with uh, a larger group of audience. And datutuwa ako kapag may nag-feedback na nagustuhan nila yung interview or yung sinabi ng professor nila. Kasi yung itong mga estudyante na kunyari, these law students or these non-lawyers na nakikita lang nila yung idol na lang lawyer. Hindi naman nila yan pwedeng lapitan na, Sir, usap tayo tungkol sa kuwaran to. <laughs> hindi, hindi nila yun magagawa. Pero um, by getting them on the podcast and by, by allotting like 30 to 45 minutes where they can be candid at you know, they can be just as less structured as they can about all these issues. Tapos ibibigay mo yon to their household. Parang I feel like that's um, a good contribution to a larger understanding of our legal systems. Sa akin for podcasting, kaya nakakatuwa sa so it gives reporters so much power. This medium gives us so much power because it's a new medium for us. It's so unexplored. Hindi siya katulad ng long long for or, or in-depth na meron ng literature, may history na of the medium na dapat ganito yung structure niya. Pyramid ba dapat? Meron ka ba dapat anecdotal na intro? Dito sa podcasting, you can experiment and nobody will judge you immediately for it. As in, kung may sinalpak ka dyan na sounds or meron kang sinalpak na, na narration bigla, hindi kayo judge kasi it's, it's something new. You can't really judge me na nandyan siya. We're trying to explore this. So let's, why not try it? And, and in podcasting, it gives you so much power in assuming the role. I feel like in podcasting, reporters assume the role of the narrator the most. When you, kasi talagang nagsasalita ka, you really narrate literally the story. Kaya maganda yung narrative podcast and that they got into criminal. Kung halimbawa, text story lang siya, isusulat mo na para, okay, the third did this or this crime happened here. But then, this happened. You can't convey that in plain text, black and white. You you will only convey that with speaking, with enunciating it in a way that you want. And pipili ka ng background music na, okay, Gusto, gusto ko iting nararamdaman. Gusto ko papalapit na mapalapit pa. Um, as in, meron ng tension yung background music. Tapos, i-deliver ko yung punchline na, he's dead. May ganong power when it comes to stor- storytelling, when it comes to podcasting. And hindi siya kaya ng nakalatag lang na text na i-scroll ng reader. Right. Ang saya kayang mag-ASMR minsan. Add ko rin diba? kasi na, hindi Ibang nalag- klase yung podcast na yung pinag-uusapan natin diyan. <laughs> Jodes, Sorry. Hindi ko na dagdag kanina na yung podcast ko kasi, primary language is uh, conversational Filipino-English. So parang, it's really conversational lang. Kahit nga yung story page ko, yung title ko ay Filipino-English eh. Kasi uh, I wanted to put yung mga con, mga gets yung mga most rapper articles or hindi most 95% ay in English. Eh, gusto ko parang, if I wanted to process it, eh, how do I process ba itong mga nangyari? In conversation, when I talk to people, conversational English. So parang yun yung gusto kong din dalhin from na parang sabi nga ni Pia, mas malaki ang podcast, maraming malaki ang podcast audience. Pero titignan mo yung mga podcast na umaariba sa Pilipinas. It's mostly conversational English, Filipino. And yun nga parang fun fact din, I want my family, like my sis, my siblings, they don't read my articles kasi. So parang, and then, natutuwa ko may set kasi marinig ko yung boses ko sa isang kwarto. Yun pala daily yeah. sinip ko yung podcast. Yes, they finally consume what my like, products or something after six years of being a journalist. So, <laughs> Ilang pala yung kailangan. Yung personal, ka. yeah, yung personal like, output ko from all these podcast things. Okay. My last question isn't technically about podcasts but about you and about uh, the work that, that we do. Um, kasi diba parang Sa lifestyle section, parati namin sinusulat na para, oh, if it gets too much, don't be ashamed to like cut off your cut yourself off from social media, from the news or whatever. Diba? Para take a breather. Um, and that's something we can't do. Like even kami who write, sinusulat namin yun sa stories namin, we, we can't cut ourselves off from 
the news cycle. So, um, again, with the context being, you guys have beats to tend to. You guys write investigative in-depth stories. Um, you also do Rappler Talk and then you produce your podcast. Um, so, when the news cycle is exhausting, what do you do? Hmm. Find another news cycle, Bea. <laughs> Well, Agenda setter. Agenda setter, girl. Just answer Bea Kupin. Um. Okay. Uh, I, parang hirap sagutin nun, pero I don't know. Because um, yes, the new cycles get the new cycle gets really exhausting. Pero ang saya saya na talaga ng pag-usapan. Alam mo yung. <laughs> It's so fun. si Lian Buwan. Adik ka talaga. <laughs> Yun ata yung Adik ka? Nakakatakot. Nakakatakot din ako. The, 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 the fire in her eyes. Ganyan yeah, more. It's so manic. Oh my God. Guys, don't pretend. 80% of our chikahan on our group chat is still about the news. Pero syempre, meron ng, meron ng tidbit of chika, tidbit of, yeah. you know, fun. But eh, kasi naman 80% ng group chat ikaw, di ba? <laughs> 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 I'm calling you. No, no, no. no. Oh, di ba? Group chats no, in I numbers. I agree. I agree. I agree, Lian. Go. So, so yun. So, parang, um, th- this has become so embedded in our lives. And I feel like, ma- and I feel like yung mga kaibigan ko is, are also reporters or are involved in the news cycle one way or another. And anyway, we are required to talk to our sources kasi pag singilan na ni Ma'am Glenda and ni Ma'am Chai, anong chika sa'yo ng source mo? Siyempre kailangan meron kang masasabi na, oh, nakipagchikahan ako kay source A, B, C, ganyan, ganyan. <laughs> and kapag minsan, kapag nakipagchikahan ako, with these people, lagi ko nilang iisipin, alam mo, gusto mo po bang i-podcast na lang to? Kasi ang dami mo rin namang insights. So, let's just make something out of this. So, to answer your question, what do I do when the new cycle becomes exhausting? You find, you really do find another new cycle. <laughs> para, Gen para, setting. kulay kunyari, pagod na pagod ka na sa GCTA, you've reached 110%. Okay, moving on. Moving on to the next legal issue where I can start from 0% and I still have a lot of energy to give. So, yun lang. When one, when one cycle gets exhausting, you move to the next cycle. So, another <laughs> exhausting cycle. Yeah. So, ako opposite ako. I'm like the opposite of Lian. Kasi ako kailangan talaga shut down for two days. Yung weekend ko, right. talagang reserve siya for my baby, my husband, my family. Tapos talagang... Parang, as in, no more looking at Twitter, no more any f- Facebook. Yung ginagawa ko, usually it's um, reading a book or making a cup of lassi. Tapos iinom ako ng lassi sa, sa may little pocket garden kami. Tapos mag-yoga yeah, kami. Ano po yung lassi? Lassi! <laughs> it's, yo- it's yogurt and ice with cinnamon. Okay. Okay, got it. <laughs> Sobrang sarap niya. As in, refreshing talaga siya. Milk tea lang kasi yung inaalam ni Lian Buwan. Hindi healthy yung milk tea, mas healthy yung yogurt. Lassie. <laughs> Lassie tayo. Lassie. <laughs> Compared to Lian na workaholic, pag weekends ko, talagang nandun, nandun ako nagsubscribe sa School of Thought ni Pia Ranada. Na <laughs> kailangan ay rest. Talagang mawala ka sa internet or mawala ka sa social media or sa work-related platforms. So, Kasi nag, I think beyond the man or industry or across the field naman eh, nag-take talaga ng toll yung pandemic on our mental health. Parang undeniable good. So parang nare-realize ko na parang the only thing I can do is like adapt and respect the days that, that wala kong parang responsibility sa work. So yun, nagbabasa ko ng libro, nanonood ako ng mga patayan sa Scandinavian Netflix mystery shows, umiiyak over mga palabas sa Netflix. Like, Taylor Swift, a joke. Taylor Swift, yeah. like, oh, niya ako yung <laughs> nag-folklore marathon na ko or pinapahinga ko isang podcast na Lian outside Rockler, o, oh, diba? Uh, I know you, you guys are lying. You can't, you can't, you can't actually tell me that you spend your days off fully without the news. Hindi ako naniwala. True! That do. happens. Oh. I do too. Oh, Lian. <laughs> well, siguro yung news lang kay guru ko ay yung, uh, kasi f- favorite ko kasing tingnan yung mga nangyayari ng sa United States. So, titingnan ko lang yun. Pero Philippines, wala. Hindi. Wala talaga na ano. Like, if I go to Twitter, I only tweet my mga usual na crying, on, crying over Taylor Swift tweet. 
off ko na yung app ko. Yan lang. Wala. As in, okay. Kasi, you already have four, five days a week na nandun eh. So, why not take the two days for yourself, Sarah? Yeah. I really agree. As, hindi naman sa paano sabihin ko na I'm under the school of thought. Um, yeah. I guess kasi may experience din ako. Um, I, I relate to Lian on a personal, personal ah, level. So talaga, much. sa kanya siya nasabi so niya na talaga, much. I used to, I used to, as in before, ganun din ako dati, sa akin, Mia, as in, at the start of pandemic talaga, I saw myself like, okay, let, let's look for the new cycle, new, new cycle, new, new cycle. Tapos, early pandemic talaga, oh my God, it's a crisis, there are so many stories, I need to do all of them. I want to split myself and just do all of them at the same time and hindi ko kaya and it led to burnout. So, parang, there was a time na nag-crash talaga ako. Um, and then ako, mas nag, ano, talagang nag-decide ako na mag- maglaan talaga ng break time for, especially under this pandemic. Umuwi ako probinsya, kung nakita yung iba background ko as compared to sa white wall and the painting behind me, umuwi ako. <laughs> and I really spend my weekends in, the, as in, even after work hours, as in, if, if our audiences didn't notice, nagkakot off kami ng stories by 8pm, hindi na kami nagpapasa, unless it's breaking. And for me talagang, patay na talaga, hindi na ako nagbabasa. And actually, I take it so seriously, yung pag, pag, pagtatanggal ko talaga sa social media and sa balita na, minsan, I don't know if this is good, pero Monday, nanating yung Monday, di ba, influx of stories, and daming stories yun sa iba-ibang beat, and minsan naisip ko parang, nangyari na pala to, ito pala yung story, ito na pala yung art dito sa presidential, sa president sa palace, ito na pala yung narrative dito. Sa justice beat pala, ito na, ito na pala yung narrative. Ang dami pala nangyari. Kasi talagang iisip ko yun. And, um, ang aking ano naman, ang aking lassie, is uh, K-pop and anime. As in, if you're into, as in, Lian, ang dami nangyayari sa ibang bahagi ng internet. Hindi lang siya, hindi lang siya, hindi lang siya balita. As in, ang dami nangyayari sa ibang, <laughs> Okay, so, I got. This month I gotta is really defend though that, that things really do fine. Me, like for example, for pleasure or uh, on my rest days, I listen to, for example, the daily. Tapos kagabi na nag tune out, tune out na ako. Tapos ang episode sa the daily, it's about the episode of the of Trump's appointee to replace Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. So yung utak ko, umahan na naman na, oh, ang ganda ng analysis ganyan. Then I'll watch something on Netflix and meron na naman, merong, it's about the justice system, ganyan-ganyan, tapos parang, ah, things really do find me talaga in this. <laughs> I think, <laughs> parang, uh, okay, what can you resist? <laughs> may affinity ka talaga siguro sa ganyan. For me, parang, kaya, kaya lang importante talaga yung may two days na lalayo ka muna sa new cycle kasi it's your way to parang i-refresh mo yung utak mo para, sorry, may motor. <laughs> <laughs> okay lang yan. See, Parang, those are the realities of working from home. Yeah, yun. Important exactly. talaga na may, na may set, mag-pull away ka muna. Kasi doon mo makikita kung ano yung dapat, at least for my podcast, doon ko makikita kung ano yung topic na dapat kong itahel for the next week. Like, kunyari, on a weekend, ano yung pinag-uusapan ng mga safe space ko online, mga group chat na hindi journalists. Parang pag pinag-uusapan nila yun, o oh, baka ito maganda topic for next week. Parang doon ko makikita yung big picture na uh, wala ko sa wala ko sa take off it na nangyayari. Exactly. Yung sinasaya mo nga, yung pag, when I tune out of the news, tapos makikita ko dun sa my non-journalism group chats or the non-journalism people on Twitter and this is what they're talking about and I feel like I could contribute to that discussion. And then, it's just... It's just it's early, so, and your, your non-journalist, non-journalism Twitter is lawyers, eh? You're well, well, okay. <laughs> so in summary, this question was an unintended attack on Miss yeah. Lee. <laughs> Yeah. No, but but I mean, if you're happy, not totally disconnecting yourself, if it works for you, then it works. Gotta for find you. the lassie. PF, send me lassie. Right. Find, find your lassie <laughs> in life. Yung, yeah. yung pala yung takeaway ng buong interview yeah. na to. Find your lassie find in your life. Lassie. Okay, wait. Tatapusin ko na to kasi kung hindi ko tatapusin, baka abutin pa tayo ng vaccine. <laughs> uh, hindi pa rin tayo tapos magkuda dito. So, hopefully, you've learned a little more about our work as journalists and also the work behind each podcast episode that you can find on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, wherever else you find your SoundCloud. podcasts. SoundCloud. Sorry? SoundCloud. SoundCloud. Yes, SoundCloud also. Or wherever else you find your podcasts. Okay, so I hope you listen and subscribe to Love to Tear the Land, You Speak Beyond the Story, Seat of Power and Criminal. Thanks again to Lian, Jodes, Pia, and Rambo for joining me for this Rappler Talk. This has been Bea Kupin. Keep yourself informed and please register to vote for the 2022 elections. Thank you for watching Rappler. Bye!